What's up everybody welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we're going to talk about how to balance finances with bodybuilding. Now here's the interesting thing. Bodybuilding for some is going to be a hobby. Bodybuilding for some is going to be a job. And bodybuilding for some is going to be a way to make themselves financially secure. Now not many people are going to be able to do that but whichever way you look at it whether it's a hobby or it's you know the, what you're going to make a career out of it takes money in the beginning to do it, plain and simple. And we've talked about this before, but and we've talked about the expenses before, not even just including, you know, the traveling expenses, tanning, stuff like that, but your food expenses and stuff like that. So go ahead and we're going to go ahead and kind of pick that apart a little bit. Now, when I was younger, I mean, I always had a job since I was like 11, 12 years old, eight years old, whatever it was, had the paper route. Then I was working at a, you know, a pizza place with my, my cousin, delivering pizzas, and I was cooking pizzas. So I always had a job to where I could buy my own food, supplements, clothes, whatever it was that I needed. Now, you know, fast forward to when I was an adult, that was just part of my life. Part of my life was bodybuilding is here. This is what I do. I need to make you know, arrangements to make sure that I have these necessities, which is a gym membership. Um, and... I guess to me, honestly, you know, the food takes up a lot of the money that you're going to spend on it. Unless you're, you're in a country where you can take steroids and they're legal, you know, that takes up a good chunk of change. But the food is what really, you know, is takes up most of your money. Now, this is what I'm getting asked, you know, like, Jerry, you know, I can't afford to be a bodybuilder because of the food that I have to eat that's going into it. Now, I'm not sure, you know, there's uh, in different states, different countries, I'm not sure the situation, to be honest with you. In Maryland here, we have Giant, which is a uh, grocery store, and we have Safeway, which is a grocery store. And both of these have these little cards that are like saver cards. So if something's on sale, you scan that card, you get the sale. And a lot of times, stuff like chicken, fish, um, you can get, um, I mean, there's oatmeal packets that are like two boxes, buy one, get one free, stuff like that. I mean, there are definitely things out there that you want to you know, look for. And these bodybuilding friendly foods don't really have to be that expensive. Now, if you're going to look for, you know, protein sources, I'll be honest with you. There's the 5% thing that says food is always a better option. Now, if you have a family, if you have bills that you can barely pay to begin with and you're still wanting to do bodybuilding, the most cost effective way to get your protein in, and I don't care what anybody says, is to go ahead and buy a protein powder. Okay, get the... Um, any kind of protein powder it doesn't have to be super expensive, you know, whey protein, isolate, hydrolyzed, super turbo, ultra. It could be just a regular fucking egg protein, which is fairly cheap. And it's going to be cheaper than you buying fucking egg whites or eggs themselves. Okay, so, you know, that's just my personal opinion. The 5% is going to get it done. All right, and that doesn't mean that you're going to have to have food. That means you don't have the money for food because you have all these other responsibilities, but you're going to find a way to get it done. And that other way could be supplementing the way, uh, supplementing the protein powders for your food. Uh, not for every meal, but if you want to have, let's say you're having 24 egg whites a day. Well, a couple scoops of that protein powder is a lot cheaper than buying, you know, two dozen eggs a day. Plain and simple. Then you're not wasting the yolks. You know, um, adding fats to your diet, very simple. Olive oil, it's cheap. Okay, so you got to look at it kind of. You know, the not the risk to benefit, but the money to benefit ratio, I guess, to figure out, okay, these things are good and they're cheap. And, you know, you kind of have to say, okay, well, if, uh, you know, if I want to do this bodybuilding thing, I normally have three meals that I eat out a week because I'm busy and I don't have time to stop and I'm at work. So I just grab something on the go. Those three meals are not there anymore. Those three meals are gone and they're now packaged meals that you take with you because you're taking that money that you're spending eating out and you're buying food at the grocery store with it, packing it and taking it with you. I mean, if you want to be a bodybuilder, shut this message off. If you want to be a bodybuilder and you want to compete and you want to get gains, you want to do all this stuff, it takes a little bit of planning and it does take a little bit of sacrifice. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your, your you know, if you eat fucking Denny's all day long, if you eat fucking junk all day long, you still have to sacrifice the time in the day, whatever point it is, to go to the gym and train. I mean, you have to do that. You have, there are absolutes that you have to do if you want to be successful at this. And one of those things is time management, money management, stuff like that, that I don't think a lot of people think of. They just think, oh, I'm going to go lift weights. I'm going to get fucking huge. I'm going to go do a competition. I'm going to become famous. Or they just want to get big just because they want to be big and they don't really give a shit about competing. Or they just want to be super aesthetic and, you know, shredded to the bone. And, you know, it just, 
depends on you know what you're trying to do, what your situation is. If you're having a hard time balancing your finances to be involved with the sport or get bigger, accomplish your goals, it might be time to look at another job. Getting another job, a side job, a, you know, a second job, whatever the case may be. Now, again, if you have family, if you have a wife and kids or husband and kids or whatever the case may be, you're looking at taking away from them in order to accomplish your goals. Okay, which some people may say, hey, fuck, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Then other people may say, I don't think that's right. Okay, that basically boils down to what's right for you. Does your family understand? Are they on board with it? Are they okay with it? I mean, there's some families that are... You know, all about, hey, whatever you want to do, we'll support you. And other families are like, hey, you're taking time away from us. You know, we need you here. We need the time. We need the money. We need this. We need that. It, it depends on the situation. But there's definitely ways that, to get around it. And, you know, honestly, where there's a will, there's a way. Bottom line, if you really want to do it, you'll get it done. But I personally, my personal opinion, and this is being 38 years old, having done this for 22 years, my personal opinion is if bodybuilding takes away from your family, and bodybuilding takes away from other aspects of your life, you should not give up those other aspects. You shouldn't take food off the table from your kids because you want to be a bodybuilder. You know, you shouldn't sacrifice vacations with the wife and the kids because you want to be a bodybuilder. Because there is a good possibility that may not be there later on for you. If something happens because you're chasing this bodybuilding dream and, you know, the wife just says, you know what, enough. This is selfish. This is this. This is that. I'm tired of it. You know, like, you've got to slow it down. You've got to stop it or whatever. And you're like, fuck you. And she leaves. Hey, man, there's no vacations happening after that. Okay, there's no way to go back after that and say, hey, I'm going to go on a vacation after I'm done bodybuilding. You know, so you definitely have to weigh your options. And that's advice that it's not even, nobody asked me for that. But it's something I feel like I have to put in there because so many people get so focused on the now, like the bodybuilding now, what's happening now, my gains, my competitions, getting winning that next show, that they forget about the shit around them. And, you know, if you're trying to, to balance your finances, there's probably a reason why you can't finance. If you're working a job and you can't finance the bodybuilding aspect, you probably have other responsibilities that are much more important than bodybuilding. Bodybuilding will always be there later. Go to the gym and train. Enjoy yourself. You know, try to make gains as best you can. When you're financially stable and you can afford to put more money into the bodybuilding as a hobby or whatever the case may be, do it then. But by us training at gmail.com, leave comments down below, but don't fight www.bonusofraining.com is a blog and where it's to balance your finances the best you can, bicep, and we're out.